Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's uh, Big P here. You know, don't you? You know, because that's why you've tuned in. Been having a little think about the uh, the Jazza Dickens fight against Kid Galahad, and this is what I think about it. I think it's a bit smelly. I think it's going to be a stinker. I think Galahad bores everybody to death and spoils everybody to death on the night. And I think he wins uh, probably nine rounds to two. We are round shared. That's what I think. But I do like Jazza, or I always call him Yazza, don't I? Yazza Dickens. Uh, that's just cause my Doncaster draw accent. I do like Jazza Dickens, Jazza Dickens, I like him. Kid Galahad, I don't like him. I don't like his style. I don't like how he conducts himself. He's not the sort of person that I'd want to be in pub with my mates with and say, hey, come on, let's get off home. Let's 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 get a taxi home quick. Kid Galahad's fighting. No, 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 he's not for me. His style's awful, he's a ball feast, but he is also a surgeon. It reminds me a little bit, about Tyson, like Tyson Fury uh, and Andre Ward before Tyson fought well the last time because Tyson came out swingers, didn't he? But he reminds me like a mini miniature Andre Ward, always out of range and comes in, does his work, gets out. It's not a fan-friendly style, so I do hope that Jazza Dickens punches him upside down and knocks him out cold. I'm only saying what other people in boxing industry are saying. But they're not going to come out here and say it. It's, I'm nothing personal against Kid Gala, but I don't like that style of fighting and I don't like how he conducts himself. So I hope he gets iced. So, but it is what it is. Uh, $202,500 winning purse. So basically, they're going to get $100,000 a piece, aren't they, before stoppages? So that's good, isn't it? So we have to give credit to the personal people putting the money up. That's good. But. You wouldn't open your curtains to watch him, would you? You know, he makes Lawrence Coley look like a Turo Gatti. So, but it is what it isn't, but it will be a stinker. Sky didn't want it, did they? Nobody wanted the fight, hardly. So, uh, moving on, I've had a lot of emails, and a lot of people seem to think the rock hard sending me emails, hiding behind threats and vile, Vi the vileness is unbelievable, I don't delete them all now we have to save them all, we have to save them all but let me just say this if you want to send me vile vile stuff because I've got an opinion about Kel Brook Golovkin go take it over with people like Carl Frotch who come out on IFL the other day he said that Golovkin ruined Kel Brook's career, but I don't blame Golovkin, I blame the people around Kel Brook, why would an £147 welterweight Fight a killer middleweight. Not only a killer middleweight, the best middleweight record of anybody in middleweight history. He's got the record for the most defences, and I think that nearly all of them were knockouts, weren't they? So, you know, or is he joint with Bernard Hopkins, but he didn't have many knockouts, did he? He's another ball feast job, another kid Gallagher. But point I want to make is that we've got this killer guy. He's like a killer. And we're putting little Kel Brook from Sheffield in with him, who went life and death with uh, Inwit Dickybo. I forgot his name now, but he had a bald head and a Dickybo. He went life and death with him. So, you know, why, who put him in there? With Dominic Ingle? With Kel Stepdad, Terry? With Eddie Hearn? Somebody said, fight Golovkin and you'll get X amount and save the show. It ruined his career. All one side of his face smashed in, all the other side half smashed in. Well, Kel Brook's a beast, isn't he? He's a beast at 160. His first ever fight at 160, but he's a beast. Well, he sparred Carl Froch. He only sparred Carl Froch before Carl Froch fought, fought Durrell because they wanted Kel to mimic a bit of speed and we him being quicker than well to it and Carl being a super mill. That's all. It doesn't mean to say that you can go mix it with people around that weight division. He fought at welterweight all his life. The fight after Golovkin, he comes back and gets wrote off again. And that's the psychological damage. And you saw, then he moves back up to 150-odd again, then goes back down. Who are these people in his ear hole? 
Who are these people in Kell Brooks, Hero, making them go up and down like yo-yos for the last five, six years? What's all that about? What is all that about, eh? Who's advising? Who's advising this kid? He could have been one of the greats. Kell Brook could have been one of the greats. He could have been uh, Pernell Whitaker, Terry Norris. He could have been something like that. Some a little bit special, special one. His nickname, wasn't it? But what happened? You put him in with a killer at one sixty. Let me just say this to you. If Conor Ben pinches a WBA interim belt from Eddie Hearn's mate, that Gilberto Mendoza at WBA, and let's say Eddie lobbies to get him up to world championship status, WBA regular. Golovkin's still the world champion, isn't he, at middleweight? Would Eddie Hearn put Conor Ben in? Would he put Conor Ben in with Golovkin? Would Nigel Ben have that? No, they're not going to have that, are they? Would Mickey Duff have put Lloyd Unigan in with Marvin Agler? No, he wouldn't have done, would he? Hey, it wouldn't have happened, would it? Would Paulie Malignaggi have fought Canelo? Because he had a belt, didn't he? Paulie Malignaggi were a welterweight champion. Would he have fought Canelo? Would Manny Pacquiao have fought Golovkin? No, so why Kel Brook? So you people, two, only two people, but the length of the emails, unbelievable. So this is my reply to you, you people. Next time you want to have a pop at me, go and look at the facts. We have weight divisions for a reason. Fighters are not superheroes. If they were, you'd have Tommy Frank from Sheffield, the flyweight, fighting Anthony Joshua, the heavyweight, wouldn't you? Because fighters are superheroes. But they're not. They're human beings. And they're insecure, fragile human beings at best of time. Because they're all controlled, aren't they? And used and abused. So, putting Kel Brook in with a killer middleweight with a massive puncher. Let me tell you how big a puncher Golovkin is. George Groves went out to spar Golovkin, right? Went out to spar Golovkin. George Groves, a, a big bear in California. First sparring session, two broken ribs. Two broken ribs. That particular week, sparring partners were dropping like flies. This is with big pillar gloves on this. So can you imagine getting them little half the size of the pillar gloves? So you've got them little 10 ounces on, fighting Kel Brook, a little welterweight. Or big welterweight, but still a welterweight. Career welterweight against Golovkin, who everybody says is a super middle boiled down. It's a recipe for disaster. So you need to send me an email and apologise for that. All right. Uh, like I just said there, they're not going to put Conor Ben in with him, are they? Hey, Chris Eubank didn't want to fight Golovkin. That's why Kel Brook stepped in. Hey, Chris Eubank didn't want to fight him, did he? Eddie Hearn wasn't going to lose that date, worry, at the O2 Arena in Greenwich. Paid all that money out for that arena. And Chris Eubank Jr. is pulling out at fight. Hey, they weren't, they weren't going to lose that money. Kel, you can still keep it up. Kel, it's Eddie. Apples and pears, plot up. We'll be Kate, lovely jubbly. I can imagine a phone call. Can you look, Kel? Fight Golovkin if you get beat. Dominic will throw the towel in if you're getting beat up. And you'll still have your belt to fall back on. Uh, well to wait. You just have to boil down. It's only another 13 pounds. And then you can fight at Sheffield and you get two pay-per-views. It's like a two-for-one. It's like a deal, isn't it, when you go for a car? It's a two-for-one job, isn't it? Or two leather jackets for the price of one. It's wrong. It's wrong. I mean, we have, like I've just said, we have weight divisions for a reason. And you're not going to get Sonny Edwards, old rat fink, fighting Dylan White, are you? Super fly against heavyweight. And like I've just said, you're not going to get uh, Tommy Frank fighting Anthony Joshua. Fighters are not. Superheroes, are they? I want to touch on the Mark Breland situation. Now I touched on it in another video, but I watched it and I think Wilder's comments were a bit outlandish. I think he's lost plot. He's got too many people around him and he's acting. And I don't I don't normally agree with Johnny Nelson, but Deontay Wilder is acting like a dick. And I think Mark Breland should have kept his counsel and not said anything, but every now and then people have to come out and reply to people when they say things. Mark Breland, Olympic gold medalist, five-time national Golden Gloves champion, uh, and he was WBA champion, beat Lloyd Dunnigan. He, he was bashing people up, big six-foot-three welterweight, 
the biggest ever welterweight on record. All right. I think he was half an inch taller than Paul Williams. Point I want to make is he beat Lloyd Unigan with a jab. And Lloyd Unigan blasted Donald Curry away, didn't he? In one of the greatest ever victories on American soil by a British fighter. So I tip my hat to Lloyd Unigan. But point I want to make is Mark Breland, maybe he had to come out and defend himself. Is it in bad taste? Yeah, any, anybody washing the dirty linen in dirty linen in public like that's in bad taste. You can have a little pop of it, pop at them in interviews, but my opinion is he should have saved it for his book. But it is what it is. All right. The Eddie Hearn 40 quid pay-per-view. What do I think to that? Uh, do I think it's fair? No, I don't think it's fair. It was 15 quid, then 20, then 25, now 40. I broke the story of it being 25. I broke the story of it being 40 quid. Uh, I think it's a joke. Um, it is what it is. But will they go through with it? We're going to see, aren't we? Because there's a lot of bluffers in boxing. What I mean by bluffers, we all know about Tyson Fury's Traveller Lives Matter March to London. We're a million travellers, don't we? What was that, six, seven months ago? We haven't heard anything since. If it long, might even even been longer. We've not heard a peak. Where's these million people? Travellers all marching around London. We've not heard a peak. Sometimes people say things for PR. They jump on a trending story. Tyson's a master at it, a master. But uh, I can explain it. I think this 40 quid thing, it could happen, but we don't know, do we? We don't know if they're just doing it to fill column inches. I mean, what we had yesterday, Eddie Earn telling us all about his career as a boxer. Well, you know what I said in the, in the, in the video the other day, don't you? Eric Guy came out, the production guy at Matchroom and blah, blah, blah. He films all amateur stuff. He said, yeah, Eddie Earn had two amateur fights, but they were only skills bouts. Skills bouts, that means there's no winner. It's just a little move around between two little kids. Not even on program, not registered as amateur fights. So technically, Eddie Earn has never had any amateur fights. He had two skills bouts. So all them people abusing me, get over yourselves. There's no reward getting dished out for skills bouts. Not when he said he were four and oh, three by way off. What they didn't touch on was the guy that Eddie interviewed, who he fought, he didn't even know that he fought Eddie Hills. So what's this Eddie Hills story? Is that just more lies? It's, listen, it's got more holes in it than Swiss cheese, Eddie's story. But it is what it is. We've touched on that about fighting in Saudi Arabia. Haven't they? they want all of the British fans to pay for it, don't they? 40 quid pay-per-view. I mean, Eddie's running around like a chicken with no head saying, 40 quid pay-per-view, we'll get 3 million buys. That's 120 million going in pot. So you, the British fans, are going to pay for that. But like I said in a video earlier, the complaint email is viewers at sky. Viewers are at sky.uk. All right? So that's what we need to take it up with Ed Robinson. No, we're taking it up with me. But like I said, they're going to be going to Saudi. Look at the human rights that they've got in Saudi. They're not going to let any British fans see it. Why don't they just wait for fans? Why go out there? Because everybody's flapping out there. They want to balance the, balance the sheets. But it is what it is, isn't it? You know what I mean? I want to touch on Campbell Hatton, Ricky Hatton's son. Why? This is craziness. Why are we having him rammed down our throats? Why is that? Is it because his dad's Ricky Hatton? Is he going to have a padded record like Conor Ben's now? Is he going to have for the British title? Because Conor Ben's world rank, but... He's not fought for a British title yet. Our fighters skipping the levels. You know, I always go about the levels. I get a bit of grief for it. Area, English, British, Commonwealth, European, and then world. You can't just expect to go intercontinental belts to get your ranking and then chase down a mandatory slot. What about learning your craft all the way up? Too many British fighters are going abroad now and they're not. Winning the fights, they're going abroad, taking a payday, and Eddie Earns is walking about saying, "He who dares wins, Rodders. He who dares wins, Coog." It ain't about he who dares wins and dare to be great. It's about learning your craft. I don't like to go on about this, but Carl Froch learned his craft at British level. He won the belt outright. He had God knows how many Commonwealth title fights. Learning his craft—that's what you do. You learn your craft. Otherwise, you'll end up like Dave Allen, don't you? Jumping in with Lewis Ortiz. 
We all know what happened there, don't we? Dave's tongue opened up like that from side. And they had to gel all the way down the side. But not the tip, all the side. <laughs> talking like that for six months. And it doesn't sound too clever as it is. That's what happens when you miss the levels. Dave's not got an area belt. In English, a British, a Commonwealth, a European. But he went in with a guy who was technically a world champion. Lewis Ortiz was the WBA interim champion. Any promoter worth his salt would have upgraded him to that regular belt, wouldn't they? Eddie Hearn didn't do that because he signed Lewis Ortiz as a blocker to keep him away from Anthony Joshua. That's why he signed Usek to keep him away from Joshua. They are known in the industry as blockers. So Dave Allen goes in with WBA interim guy, who's really technically a world champion, isn't he? Two-time Olympian, southpaw, massive puncher, knocked everybody out more or less than we thought. The belt was on the line because Dave weren't worthy of a title shot then for an interim belt. But look at the qual look at the difference you've got. An area level guy going in with like a, a world champion in the in the making. And what happened? Never won a round, got smashed to pieces. Smashed to pieces, came out at ring, peeing blood for three weeks, and his mouth opening up like that, like Kermit the Frog. You see where I'm coming from? Sooner or later, this matchmaking from Eddie Earn is going to get somebody killed. It's going to get somebody killed. Now, somebody already died on one of his shows in America, didn't they? That, uh, Patrick Day or whatever his name is, God rest his soul. May he rest in peace, but... <clears throat> we all saw Eddie's crocodile tears after that happened, didn't we? Two days later, we were making a fight with two drug cheats. This is the type of person that you're up against. You people, hero worship him, don't you? I'm just stating facts. That's all I'm doing, stating facts. I'm just a messenger, stating facts. So it is what it is, isn't it? But uh, I want to touch on Gareth A. Davis and how seedy he is. The interview with Ebony Bridges where she got up on a table, stripped off and showed her his, her leg and all that all the way up to her arse. If that were my daughter, she'd be grounded for a year, right? But she's obviously got two two brain cells in her head, but Gareth A. Davis lolling and staring and looking at her like that, he was like a peeping Tom. That, to me, is seedy. So I don't like him. So I just want to say I think that's seedy. But I can say that, can't I? I'm only saying what people in the industry are saying. I'm not bullying him or anything like that. People in the industry say it. But they're not going to come out on camera and say that the man is seedy. The man is proper seedy. But it is what it is. How's about this one? Name me five fighters who retired world champions and never came back again. I'll tell you. I've got them all here. Edwin Valero, he died age 28, so basically he re retired as a world champion. WBC, WBA champion, 27 and 0, 27 knockouts. The guy's a living legend. 27 knockouts out of 27 fights, 28 years of age. WBA super featherweight champion, WBC lightweight champion, 10 world title fights on the trot, knocked them all out. Won his world title in his 18th fight. And obviously, he had 27 fights altogether, 27 knockouts. Jermaine Taylor, 28, 4 and 1. Former undisputed world champion. The last guy to win all the belts in, in any division. All the four belts, plus he won the ring magazine. Beat Bernard Hopkins twice on trot. Carl Frotz knocked him out, they went 12 rounds. But point I want to make is he came back... Uh, after fighting at super middleweight in that tournament, he came back and fought at middleweight. Won IBF middleweight title, never fought again from age of 36. So he, he ended up as retiring and being finished but as a world champion. Terry Marsh, 26 and 0 in a draw. Age 29, he were, uh, I think he was like welterweight champion, wasn't he? The fireman, Terry Marsh, uh, he never fought again, world champion. Uh, Lennox Lewis, 41-2 on a draw. Beat everybody he fought. Unified champion. He uh, never fought never fought again. He got out after his last fight against Vitaly. And Carl Froch, unified champion at super middleweight. Ice George Groves with a right hook or right straight right, wherever it were, in, at Wembley. Bent Groves' leg, leg, leg over, finished him off, iced him, punched him upside down. 
there's five guys there who knew the boxing, but if anybody could tell me any more, leave it in the comments section, all right? Or email me, porkycorner at mail.com. Anybody wants to come on channel, porkycorner at mail.com. I need your phone number. I want to speak to you on video first so I can check that you're not a troll. All right. Thank you for liking and subscribing and leaving a comment. Big things are planned this year. Massive things. Humongous. So don't forget to jump on the back of the Porky Express train. All right. Peace out.